Foxy Dog. Originally, I don't know about originally, but commercially available on a shank, um, on a Waddington shank from Solitude Flight Company, which I will show you now. And I will be tying it on a tube. Being a Scandi fly, I'm pretty sure they just tied it on the Waddington shank for ease of use from the general public, but um, really works better on a tube as a uh, true Scandi fly. And it's a, it's a pretty simple one. Works really good for uh, steelhead uh, winter, fall, spring, and you can scale it down for the summertime. So what I've done is I have a 40-40... Uh, Siam blue flexi tube. I slid on a medium flexi weight in silver. Uh, color doesn't matter though, as you'll see, because uh, we're just going to cover it up. This is just for density and weight purposes. And then I've cut the back of the 4040, the big junction tubing, into about 5 eighths of an inch. So once you slide on your, your flexi tube, and they just slide on literally just like this, tie in a thread, and I'll tie it up front and create just a little bump to where these this can't slide out and then real quick I'm gonna throw a little zap a gap on my thread and make sure this stays put and then if I got more I'll just kind of capture it with my thread and then tie it over the tube here and I've also done a real slight burn on the back end. And that doesn't do anything. It doesn't strengthen the tube. It doesn't do anything except for make it just look a little bit more polished and finished. And then the factory fly has uh, like a hot orange thread. I'm not sure if I'll go that route. I'll probably just leave it black actually. So I'm going to run down and leave... A little bit of the tube shown here. I'm not good with measurements, so we will call this um let's see one, two, three eighths showing three eighths. That's gonna be the magic number. I take some small oval French tinsel. Tie it in. And then three wraps. One, two, three. So I can snug that in. And pull it tight while I do this just to get everything real nice and tight up there. Tie that off. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of Mirage. And I'm delaying here because I'm trying to find my medium, but I don't have any idea where it is in the mess I have. So actually, why don't I do this? I'm going to do holographic. Like I say, this isn't this step isn't part of the factory fly, but since we're going to tie a Scandi style, we might as well do it right. So I'm going to take some blue holographic tinsel and run it back to my tag. And run it back to my thread. Tie it off. Clip. And then run my thread back over just to get it nice and even there. Alright, so we've got a good base for our fluorofiber. I'm using blue fluorofiber. I'm trying to get this in stock right now. This stuff's been harder and harder to get, but you can also use Microlon if you don't have this, or Hackle fibers are fine too. I will keep trying to get more fluorofiber in stock as more colors become available. So I'm just going to take a little bit of 
just a little clump here tied in up top wrap it back to my tag and I'm gonna tie all this down like yay and once you get it to your tinsel lift it up make a couple wraps underneath it pulling your thread towards the front of the tube that'll capture it and now you can see that it's angled up like that so that gives us a lifted tail and take this now and then angle cut real aggressive angle cut So all these now are different lengths. And that's that. Now I'm going to take some medium oval silver. That's my rib, tie that in. My holographic silver SSS hollow braid, sea lice silver. Tie that in, and I'm going to stop somewhere up here, like midway. Let's see, we are. I'm really bad at measurements, so we'll say a quarter inch from the front of the flexi weight. I'm going to start wrapping here. So this is our body and now you can see why it's important to do this thread wraps underneath because it's still propped up even though we've just kind of crushed it with materials. you hit your thread tied off now there's two ways to go about this next this next part here we can use a dubbing loop or we can just go regular uh, and dub on the thread I'm going to well I'll just do it regular we've done a lot of dubbing loops so when you do this on the thread, it can be easy to overdub. And so if you put too much on, and we're going to end up velcroing this out, picking it out. And so if you put on too much and it dubs too loose, take it back off and redo it. You want this really tight. If you dub it too loose, when you go to pick it off, it's all going to fall out on you. So you want to make sure that you get a really good solid they call them dubbing noodles a good solid dubbing noodle that's going to stick to your thread real well otherwise when you go to pick this off you're going to not have a body left and on the factory fly there isn't there isn't much of this dubbing so we'll just leave it we'll leave it this is a good size all right, so I'm just going to take my Velcro and rough this up a little bit. And you can use a longer fiber like the SSS Dub or Salmo Supreme. And that works really well. Um, I just, I use that stuff a ton and I just kind of wanted to diversify a little bit and we can stay truer to the factory pattern this way. And I don't know what uh, originally this fly was using. Um, you know, I think it's a Charles St. Pierre fly. He could have used anything, and Solitude decided it was too hard to get, so they subbed. Um, a lot of times, these fly companies will sub materials uh, that are easier to get than, necess than maybe necessarily the, the material that was originally used by the fly designer. It's a little long. All right. So I'm going to tie in a royal blue saddle hackle up front and tie it in, take my stem, bring it back, 
and lock it in. And now I'm going to kind of, all this, all this dubbing I brushed out, I'm going to push straight up and down because I want my hackle to nest in there. One, two, three, four, five wraps. Oh, redo. Don't like that. All right, one full wrap. One, two, three, four. Out on five. All right, so just broke my hackle tip. So I leave this stuff in just so you guys can see um, the, the process of what happens when things go wrong. And most of the time, every time I turn on this camera, something goes wrong. And as soon as I shut the camera off, everything works great. All right, so we're gonna try this again with a new feather. I'm not sure I like that feather entirely anyway, so this isn't a bad thing. All right, rewrap. So there's one full wrap. One, two, three, four. And actually, you can grab hackle pliers here to get a hold of her. These saddles like disappear real quick. And five. All right, we got her. Got to pinned, wrap your rib, and you want to cross. You want to cross your hackle stem at each juncture here. And I'm pulling this pretty darn tight. Wire is uh, a lot easier to secure than this oval tinsel as far as a rib goes. You don't have to be nearly as tight with it but the rib gives you substance and it's a little more true to form for the European style flies. Cut my hackle stem here. Now since this is oval tinsel and not wire, I'm gonna add just a little drop of UV glue. You can use Zapigap too, but UV is a lot quicker. And hit it with the torch right at the juncture where my oval tinsel hit the my hackle stem in the rear just because uh, the oval doesn't hold it as secure and I want to make sure this doesn't come out so uh, this is just an easy insurance policy to make sure that everything stays where I want it now we're going to come back over this ice tub again rough it up and if you have a longer fiber dubbing, like the SSS or Samo Supreme, this would be much more dramatic as far as what picks out and kind of the overall flow. Put my tube over. And that's one beauty about tubes over shanks is you can, especially in a Regal where it's not a true rotary, awesome vise, I love the vise, but it is not a true rotary. And so when you have to flip over, um, when you have to flip over your shank, it, it doesn't always hold true to rotation, especially on like, um, if you're tying on like Alec Jackson's or whatever and you're cutting the hook point off. Now we run into this problem where we've got this back hackle like kind of straight up when this front hackle has that nice sweep that we're looking for. And the only thing you really need to do to fix that is kind of come down pinch it with your fingers and roll this tube and that'll make everything and just kind of pinch it with your fingers as you roll it you can pinch it hard you know I mean these these flies are if it falls apart doing this it's gonna fall apart fishing especially on a spay cast so now you can see everything's all nice and swept back and, and looking all cool if you can't grab your fly and twist it and roll it without a breaking it won't hold up to a spay cast you know spay cast i mean if you think about what your fly is going through going mach 5 through the air on snap tees and anchors and everything else 
Um, a spade cast is definitely entirely more violent than anything uh, we can really do here at the vise. So first, they run black hair on the bottom and blue on top. So this is black marble fox. Clip out a piece. And I'm going to take the tips and just kind of pull out the real long hairs. And then comb it. Comb it backwards. You can see all this fluff I pulled out of that. Comb it forwards. And then you can see exactly what we're dealing with. And you can take these points and just kind of taper them a little bit to get a nice tapered wing. And this one I'm going to even it up with the tail, maybe just a hair longer than the tail. Make three wraps, take my thumb, smash it, get it nice and spread out. And then I can make my securing wraps. Now before you cut this, good practice always with hair especially, and especially on like uh, hair wing steelhead flies um, with calf tail, um, give it a yank, pull on it. If these butts move, then you need to redo it or add a couple thread wraps or do something to make it secure. But right now, you know, I can pull it, nothing up here is moving, we know it's secure. Uh, calf tail on hair wing steelhead flies is often um, a huge a huge pain because it's really slippery and a lot of times people put it in too thick and that and then you can't get these bottom fibers so um, you know if you're having problems getting this to stick um, thin it out and see actually see how much you have and maybe that's the problem is you're just using too much for now you can clean up the front of this with the razor blade if you're real careful Marble Fox cuts really, really clean off of a blade. Alright, good with our first wing. I'm going to take some angel hair. This is called Black Light. I'm going to tie it in on each side. So two wraps on this side. Flip it over two wraps on that side. Now I've created a V. Securing wraps, I'm going to take it, get it out of the way of my marble fox, and just easily cut it up so all these run at different lengths. Give it a comb. Done with the first wing. Now, I'm going to take some pheasant rump. And this is blue. Um, Fish Hunter's got the dark turquoise, which is really a great color. I'm going to tie it in tip first. Mm -hmm. Take my scissors, roll it back. And start my wraps here. I'll probably only get two wraps. That's fine. Now I'm on bare tube. Wrap it back. Now take this top fibers and just pull them down to the side. You can kind of push it up if you want. And what this has done is it's hidden our thread wraps. It's hidden these wraps so when we tie in our wing we're actually staging the wing in such a way that it won't it won't um, 
kind of adhere itself and clump up with this first wing and stay separated but by adding this middle hackle we have hidden these wraps to really make it nice and clean and you'll see on this second wing how good it turns out so Royal Blue Marble Flex. And I'm looking for some longer fibers. Let's see how long this is. That'll be pretty good as long as it stays. So we've got quite a bit of fluff in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. A lot of fluff up here and it's really thin up top. So that makes me think if when I comb it out, I'm going to lose all of this. So when you're selecting Marble Fox, you want a good mix of long guard hairs, but you also want to, you know, you, it'll never be as thick at the base as it is at the tips, but you don't want a huge difference, like super thick down there and wispy up top, because what that means is when you tie it in, it's not going to be nearly as full as you think it will be. And when you comb it, like I'm right now, you're going to get even more waste so one of the things to look for is really how far are these gonna take you in your tying I've seen some pieces of temple dog that are nothing but guard hairs and fluff and that's not gonna do you any good when it comes to your bench and actually tie it in because you're gonna get um, just a couple flies out of that entire thing if you're just looking for for a long wing now this wing I'm going to tie just a little bit longer than my underwing. Come up nice and careful. Push it down. Kind of marry them, see how this is going to look. And it's going to look pretty good. Make a couple more wraps just to really dig it in, make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And look for my razor blade that I misplaced. There it is. And you can see how clean that ties off. Okay. Good. I'm going to take some Kingfisher Blue Angel hair. And grab it, just pull out a few strands from the bottom, just like that. Tie it in the same way. Two wraps, bring it back over, V it, position, tie it in. And now lock her down. All right, not bad. And now something I'm going to add just because I love the look is some peacock curl. And again, we've strayed we've strayed pretty far here from the original factory fly, but. If you're going to tie them, you might as well make it cooler than what you can buy them. Now I'm going to take these one by one, and we want a curve. We want to curve it along the top, but I, I like when these ends kind of have an up flare, because I'll show you when you actually you take your thumbnail, and you can just lightly put a bend in it. I don't know if you can see. If you do it too much, then you're going to curly cue it. But now we've got this nice bend we can set on top. So we're not quite, doesn't look like we're quite there. So you can see we're still popping up too high. So I'm going to maybe go a little bit more aggressive on this one. And there we go. Looks good. Two wraps. And then just do this with four peacock hurl fibers. And this just adds kind of that, it's just a nice um, 
nice topper. All right, that one sucked. Let's try this one. That piece sucks too. When I use Peacock Curl for this, a lot of times I try to get the eye because the eye has the best hurl. Um, my eyes are pretty well hammered, so I've had to break out a bag, but a new bag of Peacock Curl is better than one you've been picking off for a while just because they're all nice and long and full before you start tying on your nymphs and stuff with it. And we're just gonna put these down as evenly as possible. If you try to tie them all in at once, they can run away from you. So I've always found it's better to be able to control Last but not least, for the finisher here, it's just going to be a couple turns of guinea. Normally, I would probably not do this if it was a one of mine, but the standard factory flag does do this, and I do want to follow that a little bit because. That's the flyer time. It's a foxy dog, and we're still, we're still pretty much staying mostly true to the factory fly. So when we're talking about a front hackle and especially guinea, we want to make sure that we limit the use of the bottom part of the feather as much as we can because that's where the stem is the thickest. And that's where our fly, where our fibers are going to tend to roll back the hardest and lay directly flat. They won't have kind of an upsweep to them. And it can totally kill the look of your fly. If you've done all this work to get this nice up teardrop sort of shape and your last hackle crushes all that and makes your makes your fly look really flat. And I've seen I've seen too many times the last the last step kill the whole fly. And so if it's not to your liking, gosh dang it. I didn't even break it just slipped. So that tells me I need to tie this little tip in. A little harder but don't let this last feather keep your fly from finishing the way you want it if you need to grab a new feather just do it like this ain't ain't going my way here all right try it one more time that head got built up a little more than I was wanting it to. Alright. Now we're going to see how this looks here. I'm going to take a black ultrasonic disc throw her on and see if I like the looks of that and kind of bring this all forward yeah I think I do I think I'm gonna so a little zap on the thread So for whatever reason, it stopped recording. Uh, this camera has really been kind of temperamental, but uh, I threw on a, a, a small ultrasonic disc, 
and burnt it as uh, we've done in the other videos and now we have our finished foxy dog fly sorry you didn't get to see that um, but uh, um, all that is is an ultrasonic um, after we zapped it uh, wait 10 seconds cut the thread throw in the ultrasonic and uh, burn the end and you're ready to ready to go Thank you.